Do you struggle with anxiety, depression, and grief? Then allow me to introduce you to Mimosa. I hope you caught that Jay-Z reference. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified every time we post a new video about herbalism, healing, and alignment. I'm Salima Harleston Lust, co-founder with my wife, Tammy Lust of I Willow Remedy, where we help you turn your health issues into non-issues holistically and spiritually and with a lot of fun. I've taught clinical spiritual herbalism to over 5,000 students in my various programs and courses and a resounding challenge that people face when it comes to improving their physical well-being is resolving long-standing mental and emotional hurts and disturbances. Our inner world is what creates our outer world. So if we don't feel right within, it will be expressed in our relationships, our work, and of course, in our physical health. This is why all of our programs focus heavily on mental and emotional regulation and wellness. I'm excited to share with you information on Mimosa and how it can support your internal well being. So let's get to it. Mimosa tree is also called silk tree or the tree of happiness. Its botanical name is Albizia julibrisson. Mimosa hails from China and is widely used in Chinese medicine and its names translate to happiness herb or collective happiness bark. Mimosa is native to China, Persia, Korea, and Japan. It was introduced to the West around 1745. It grows prolifically now throughout the United States in temperate zones. We live in Atlanta and right now it's blooming everywhere. It's a deciduous tree that grows to about 40 feet tall. It's dark green leaves are bipinnately compound, a little fern-like and there are about 20 to 60 leaflets per branch. Mimosa is most easily recognized by its pink flowers that grow in clusters and have these like showy, feathery, airy, fairy-like appearance. It's in the bean family, so after it flowers, there'll be hundreds of bean pods with seeds inside. Once you see the flowers, you'll forever be able to identify this tree. When you look at the flowers, I don't know how anyone can resist smiling and immediately feeling a little lighter inside. When the mimosas are blooming, which happens from May to July, they are head turners, grabbing your attention, inviting you to delight in them and to see the good. I'm always pointing them out where we're driving in the car. You can often see mimosa like growing along roadways, along the side of the highway, waterways, banquet lots, forest edges. It's very forgiving and grows in various soil types. It produces a large amount of seeds that easily germinate, which is why some call it invasive. You don't need to plant it in your yard, and in some places, it's actually illegal to do so. So trust, if it grows in your region, you'll be able to find it. You don't need to plant it. It's interesting when we classify plants as invasive. You know, it's a mindset of scarcity, as if there isn't enough space for all things. We perceive their abundant growth as a threat to the plants in the local ecosystem, but I believe that nature can teach us wonderful lessons about adjustment, gracefully navigating changes and circumstances. What if the plants that take root in places where we deem them to be harmful are actually showing up in abundance because we are asking for the very support they provide? Plants enjoy being in relationship with us and to that end, they welcome our enjoyment, our appreciation and our sustainable usage of them. Just as we offer them carbon dioxide and love, they offer us oxygen and medicine. Anxiety disorders are the most common mental illness in the United States. Around 75 to 90% of doctor visits in the US are in some way connected to stress. So think about the time we're living in right now where we're still not really post pandemic, you know, people have suffered an incredible amount of loss and grief, extreme swings of anxiety and depression during this time. And that's on top of work, familial, financial challenges, changes that folks were already facing that have been exacerbated by the pandemic, not to mention our volatile political climate. But also think about this. Rarely do we anticipate our times getting easier. <laughs> if you're reading memoirs or nonfiction books or even newspaper articles that were written decades ago, you know, there's always been a sentiment that we as a society are going through tumultuous times. In these uncertain times is a phrase we see all the time, right? And that's because there's always something that we have to figure out how to navigate be it a larger societal change, like a war, a recession, a civil right we're fighting for, there's something that's happening in our lives. And there's also, of course, all the things that are happening in our personal life. 
life is going to life. So the question becomes, how well are we able to cope, adjust, process, and flow? This is exactly why we have medicines, offerings from nature like mimosa. Perhaps it grows so abundantly because we are collectively, desperately longing for its help. The universe always answers our calls. Mimosa offers us the kind of support we need, that nervous system calm and spaciousness that allows us to reach for the light, the good, the possibility of better times ahead. When we are able to quiet some of the anxiety, then we can be reminded of our capability and our ability to process and rise above any obstacle, learning lump, or unpredictable event that we will face on our path. Mimosa is used to improve our moods from the grips of anxiety, worry, depression, fear, PTSD, a broken heart, insomnia, grief, and sadness, bad dreams, irritability, and anger, and even poor memory that's related to emotional repression. Think about how when we experience traumatic events and we essentially cut ourselves off from the memory of it to survive. Well, that can develop a habit of forgetting that we carry into our adult lives after the trauma has ended and we're now safe. When we begin healing, Mimosa helps us to break that habit, develop new neural pathways so that we don't respond to life by cutting ourselves off from it. Give us greater access to the richness that is now occurring in our lives. When we're healing, we want to remember. Mimosa gives us the capacity to face deep emotional suppression, to process the things that we find difficult to remember, to talk about, to sit with and reflect on. When our spirits have been disturbed and shaken, Mimosa relaxes us so that we can see the light that's always illumining the path out of the darkness. In terms of physical conditions, Mimosa can also be used to help with coughs, wheezing, bronchitis, asthma, and sore throat. Additionally, several constituents isolated from mimosa extracts have demonstrated anti-cancer and anti-tumor effects in vitro. Topically, it can be used for insect bites, boils and abscesses, skin ulcerations, fractures and sprains. It helps to reduce the swelling and move the blood. Mimosa bark and flowers are used as medicine and its herbal properties are sedative, antidepressant, calming, relaxant, vulnerary, anti-inflammatory, tonic, and antioxidant. The flowers are more relaxing and euphoric, kind of heady, perhaps giving you a high feeling depending on how much you take. Its energetics are cooling, sweet, moistening, and relaxing. So how do you take mimosa? You can make a tea of the fresh flowers. Dried flowers, they lose their potency pretty quickly. So you'll want to gather them fresh, use them fresh. So go gather them, then make your cup. Gather enough to make an infusion that lasts all week or mix enough where you can freeze the infusion perhaps into ice cube trays and pop one into your beverage each morning. When you gather it, remember to thank the plant and remember that you're disturbing an ecosystem. So there's going to be lots of bugs and try as you might, you're likely not going to be able to get all the bugs out. So just use a good filter when straining, you and the medicine, you'll be all right. <laughs> you can also make a tincture of the flowers and a tincture of the freshly dried bark. For your tincture ratio, you're using one to two herb to alcohol ratio and 40 to 50% alcohol. You'll take it by the drop or the dropper full, one to four times daily, depending on how you respond to the plant and your personal needs. Start low and go slow. A few drops can quickly shift your mood, while dropper fulls and consistent use over time can really help you to address those long-standing emotional issues. Up next, you're going to see me prepare a tincture of the bark and flowers, and the leaves can also be used, but it's less common. You can play around with them, though. So here, I've already gathered the mimosa that I want, and now I am separating the flowers from the branch. I've separated the flowers, and now I've started stripping the bark. I'm adding the flowers to a jar so that I can tincture the fresh flowers. Here I'm adding my alcohol. I did an initial ratio of 100 milliliters of purified water, 100 milliliters of Everclear. And after three days or so, after the bark dried, I'm adding it to the tincture. I've added more alcohol and water at the same 50-50 ratio. I let it sit for four to six weeks, then strain and enjoy. It's wonderful to use mimosa in combination with other nervines and heart chakra, third chakra herbs like chamomile, St. John's wort, passion flower, wood betony, skullcap, 
uh, lemon balm, hawthorn, hibiscus, lavender, and rose. That's just to just give you some ideas. For topical applications, you can make a liniment, a salve, maybe even a face toner, that'd be nice. And for more spiritual energy shifting medicine, consider adding it to dream pillows, room and aura sprays, um, including it in your mojo bag, making flower essences. And in terms of contraindications and precautions, avoid during pregnancy and while breastfeeding and use with caution when taking internally and in combination with ph pharmaceutical antidepressants. Talk with a qualified herbal practitioner. There are lots of nuances when it comes to interactions with plants and drugs. This is the kind of work we do and discuss inside Herbal Medicine for the Soul. And remember, if you're uncertain as to whether or not you can combine an herb and herb with certain drugs you're taking, you can use it topically and, and, and energetically. Don't underestimate the power of working with the energy of plants and inviting them into our energy system in subtle ways. We can still feel the shifts they offer us. I hope you enjoy learning about mimosa and how this medicine can support your nervous system and your emotional resilience. If you're looking for a comprehensive herbal program that prioritizes mental and emotional well-being, then consider ours, Herbal Medicine for the Soul. It's a self-paced online mentorship where we're not only training future herbalists and medical practitioners on herbal medicine, but we're teaching you how to heal and break the cycles of chronic physical pains, mental illness, pills, trauma, side effects, using herbal medicine, medical astrology, and the Calypso healing method. The link is below. Check it out. And if it resonates, see you inside. Thanks so much for tuning in and be sure to like and subscribe. See you in the next video.